used by a code whether she realizes it or not. It's as old as time and has been practiced for thousands of years, and it's the sisterhood of sorts that inspired award-winning author and journalist Sophia A. Nelson to pin the book The Woman Code, 20 Powerful Keys to Unlock Your Life. And of course, uh, Sophia, welcome to the broadcast. I have been a Twitter follower of yours for a very long time, and it's like on any given Sunday morning, <laughs> you are taking the sisters to church, right? <laughs> and breaking it down for us, such great knowledge. Tell me about The Woman Code and what inspired you to write this book. Well, first, thanks for having me. I'm afraid that you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> no, it's a good thing. <laughs> um, you're right. I, You know I have chats, and The Woman Code was kind of born out of some of those chats. I mean, this book's been in the works for a couple of years. But The Woman Code, as you say in your lead in is, it's timeless, but it's time relevant. Mm -hmm. And simply put, what the woman code is, my message to women everywhere, all women, the sisterhood of women is, look, everything you need to win at life is inside of you. Mm -hmm. Stop looking for validation in who you date, what you wear, how you look, what you own, what you drive. That's not where it is. It's inside of you. And, you know, in this day and age in the media, and, and you know, for transparency's sake, I did a reality show on VH1 in 2010. Uh, that was actually canceled because they said we were too boring. I don't think we, I don't <laughs> think we did enough tearing down. I think that's true. Um, which is fine with me, but you talk about kind of this crab in the bucket syndrome. Mm -hmm. And as women, we have difficulties lifting each other up, right? What yeah. is that? Well, it's a great code. Lift other women as you climb. I believe it's code number 16. Mm -hmm. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> <anybody. laughs> but but lift other one. women as you climb is really what you're alluding to. And I think there's a couple things. One, from the time we're little girls, we are taught to compete with each other mm -hmm. for how we look, for the attention of men, for the attention of grown-ups, whatever, in beauty pageants. Think about what we do that boys don't do. Mm -hmm. We're groomed to compete against each other. We're groomed to see other women as maybe not the enemy, but to be suspect of her, uh, to be a little catty. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how we're taught to function. We get in our girl cliques very early mm -hmm. on. We all remember mean girls in school. They grow up to be meaner women. Mm -hmm. and so. There's this culture that we as women have dealt with from time immortal, but I think it's more acute now for mm. the reason you mentioned. Reality TV, the internet, downloading YouTube, instantaneously exposes us to the worst of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? If you watch the basketball wives, the housewives, the things they say to each other, stunning. But then there's shows like Pretty Little Liars, and there are all these other shows. Then, of course, there's Scandal that mm -hmm. we all love, but we glorify being side chicks right. and having adulterous affairs. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything that we glorify in our said culture that. That's always bothered me. <laughs> is not to the boring or to the normal or mm -hmm. to the sisterly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you take a risk when you write a book called The Woman Code mm -hmm. to lift women and build women because... It's not titillating, it's not scantilating, it's not, it doesn't make you, it's not drama. Right. But it's doing really well. It's fact number one on Amazon right now. Number one best on Amazon. That's awesome. Right now, so. And I, I think it Thank does, you. I think, what I think it does is bring us back to what's important. And Absolutely. I think even with all of these shows out there, people really are searching for, I don't want to call it validation, but to come back to your roots about what's important. I'm so glad you said because that's the code. Mm -hmm. And look, the code is something that I came up with from looking at scripture, mm -hmm. from looking at the Torah, from looking at ancient writings, from, you know, some of my favorite poets, uh, from my grandmother, who I dedicated the book to, from being a professional woman for 20 years, and just living life now. When you get to be in your mid to late 40s, you start thinking about things mm -hmm. differently. You just do. Mm -hmm. To you young women out there, just keep living. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> but You'll my hope is that I could take some of what I've learned and glean from women in my life and role models in my life and say to young women, I wish I had a book like this when mm. I was 20. I didn't. There weren't a lot of women who were role models when I was in my 20s in college and in law school because we were still getting to the place mm -hmm. in corporate, et cetera, where we were role models and could be sponsors. So I think it's an amazing time to be a woman right now. Ideally, what age group would you say this book is for? <clears throat> well, you know, what's interesting, Publishers Weekly, which is kind of like the Bible of yeah. publishing, gave it a, a five-star review, and they said that it's done something that they haven't seen. It touches women in every generation. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. So it's not just for a 25-year-old or a 40-year-old. It's from women 20 to 70, mm -hmm. because there are things in here, like code number eight, age gracefully. Mm. That's a code you're only looking at if you're in your 40s. 40s now or older. You mm -hmm. don't care about that when you're yeah, 20. You're not thinking about that you're in your 20s. Of, but you will age. Right. And aging is a gift. And one of the things I want to say to women is stop looking at aging as bad. Mm -hmm. The guys get 
ball, mm -hmm. they get gray, they get a belly, and they can still run around and get 25-year-old women, and we don't think that's a problem. Right. Why is it when women age, and Tina Turner's, what, Different 77? Standard. Right. And she's got a 40-something-year-old? Mm-hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just saying. I love her. And, you know, I need you to tell me as a mom, I have a very young daughter, she's six, and to all the other moms out there with daughters, what advice would you give me about raising a little girl in this day and age? It's tough. Well, I'm not a mom, so I would be rude to give mom advices, but I am an aunt to two young nieces, mm -hmm. a tween and a teen. The teen. Well, uh, she uh, trust changed. me, I got one at home. Yeah, you, you understand she changed overnight right. to this different person. But Isn't I it think weird? the best advice that I would give or guidance is what you do, mm -hmm. She's watching everything you do. Amen. She, they're sponges. Exactly. It's same with my nieces. Mm -hmm. They watch everything I do, and they're going to parrot it. So if they see auntie, and I try to bring them to everything so that they're seeing me speaking and interacting mm -hmm. positively with other women, they learn that right. behavior. Mm -hmm. But if for women out there and you know that are in abusive relationships, I grew up in a home, I talk about this in a book, alcoholic home, very mm -hmm. violent home all the time, and yet we were in church on Sunday. Right. And as a kid, what that does to you, particularly as a girl, is it messes a little bit with your center mm -hmm. and knowing you're confused and conflicted. So to women who are in those type of relationships, I say, you know, you need to really think about that. I know it's not easy. I know women are fearful. They figure, well, maybe I can't make it on my right. own. But you're teaching your daughter how to mm -hmm. operate. Yep. Your sons as well, but your daughters, you're teaching them how to operate from a place of fear. Yeah and not from a place of strength, strength and power. Well, I love this book, and, and let me tell you, you should run out and go get it. You can meet Sophia tonight at 7 p.m. at Barnes & Noble at Lincoln Park on Northwest Highway in Dallas. You don't want to miss Thanks this. For it's being amazing. Here. Thanks we for really having me, ladies. You really appreciate you being here. I appreciate here. it. All right, we've got a great song from the wonderfully talented Charlie Warsham when the broadcast returns. Don't go anywhere.